Most patients show up in my office or to some physician's office with some vague symptoms, abdominal pain, all of a sudden they've become jaundiced and they notice it in their eyes, uh, weight loss, swelling in their abdomen. And through that process, they'll get a CAT scan. And that CAT scan will usually show a mass in the pancreas. And then they'll be referred or sent to my office. So most patients who actually show up in my office don't have a documented diagnosis of pancreatic cancer. They just have a mass in their pancreas. And so most of the discussion is what causes masses in the pancreas. And unfortunately, if it's a solid mass, that means there's a very, very, very high likelihood that that is pancreatic cancer. By a solid mass, I mean that the CAT scan shows something that is solid, more like a golf ball than cystic, which would be more like a water balloon. Cystic things are fluid-filled and solid things are not. And so solid masses in the pancreas are incredibly likely to be pancreatic cancer. Although most of the patients who show up in my office don't have that documented under a microscope proven as cancer. All of the treatment for pancreatic cancer is considered multimodal therapy. There's no one treatment that is universal. We use surgery, chemotherapy, and radiation in some combination. Unfortunately, most patients who have pancreatic cancer don't qualify for surgical intervention. And I say that it's unfortunate because the people who are going to have a longer survival are those who are eligible for surgery. All patients, regardless of whether or not they have gotten an operation, will benefit from chemotherapy and some will also benefit from radiation. There's no real way to avoid this as opposed to, for instance, colon cancer where regular screening colonoscopies can reduce your risk of getting colon cancer. There's nothing you can actively do except try to eliminate things that are risk factors in your life. The risk factors uh, are smoking, uh, smoking significantly increases your risk of developing a pancreatic cancer, among other cancers. Um, obesity, uh, a sedentary lifestyle, um, uh, not being active, not doing a lot of physical activity, that uh, those are three things that you can choose to do to try to reduce your risk, although you cannot eliminate your risk of pancreatic cancer. If you have developed pancreatic cancer, your children are about twice as likely as the average person in the United States to develop pancreatic cancer. That's as long as you don't have a long family history of multiple generations of people who have developed pancreatic cancer. If you've had a number of people in your family who have developed pancreatic cancer, then you're at a much higher risk because you're likely to have a genetic predisposition to developing pancreatic cancer. But without that family history, your children are about twice as likely to develop pancreatic cancer. Your treatment options uh, are to just get chemotherapy or surgery with chemotherapy. Surgery with chemotherapy has a much longer survival and in fact although it's only a small population of patients who present with pancreatic cancer who are going to live a very long time, all of those patients have gotten operations. So what I tell people in the office is, you want to do everything you can to try to get an operation for pancreatic cancer because that puts you into the subset that will have a longer life expectancy. Your ability to get an operation is going to be based on your CAT scan that you will receive prior to even coming to a surgeon's office. There are three things that we look for. These three criteria are considered what we would call absolute contraindications to an operation, meaning if you have any of these three, you can't get an operation for pancreatic cancer. And those three are spread to another organ, 
like the liver, which is the most common site of spread of pancreatic cancer, involvement of an artery that runs right through the pancreas, or involvement of the corresponding vein that runs right through the pancreas. Any of those three uh, are considered contraindications to an operation, which means I can't offer you an operation. There are, however, treatment strategies to try to shrink the tumor off of the artery or shrink the tumor off of the vein, and therefore involvement of a multidisciplinary team is to the patient's great benefit. A multidisciplinary team involves surgeons, medical oncologists, and radiation therapists. Each one of those three having their input to try to get the patient to the operating room because it is well known that the only patients who have a long-term survival from pancreatic cancer are those who have gotten an operation. It has been well shown in the literature, medical studies have shown that experience matters, that the higher volume of surgery you do, the better your outcomes will be, which is only common sense, but the more pancreatic cancer surgery you do, the better you are at it. We break down, uh, the literature breaks down um, volume of surgery into people who do it only once a year, people who do it more than once a year but less than once a month, and people who do, do it basically more than once a month. And that's a hospital experience, although that also uh, has shown up as individual surgeon experience. Uh, we do between 50 and 100 Whipple procedures here a year which would qualify us as a very high volume center in that a high volume center is more than 10. So people who come to my office with pancreatic cancer if they don't have any of those three absolute contraindications will be offered an operation with follow-up therapy being chemotherapy and sometimes radiation depending on the patient and the actual details of what the cancer looks like under the microscope. People who have no evidence of spread to another organ like the liver will but have involvement of the vein or the artery will undergo chemotherapy and radiation in an attempt to shrink the tumor off of either of those structures and then proceed to the operating room. If they're spread to another organ, you cannot get an operation for pancreatic cancer that will significantly extend your life. The only operations then are considered palliative. By palliative we mean improving your symptoms, although not extending your life. Just recently, we've started a trial involving the use of CyberKnife in, com in conjunction with regular chemotherapy and some standard radiation in an attempt to improve outcomes from that group that we're trying to shrink the tumor off the artery and the vein. So in people who have involvement of an artery or a vein that goes through the pancreas, we will d discuss their case at a multidisciplinary conference involving medical oncologists and radiation therapists and decide if they're the appropriate person to put into the study in order to try to shrink the tumor off of those structures to get them to the operating room. Risk factors for developing pancreatic cancer are smoking, age, obesity, a history of chronic pancreatitis, sedentary lifestyle. Some people say that various diets slightly increase your risk, although that's been debated in the literature. African Americans are also slightly more likely to develop, as are males, slightly more likely to develop pancreatic cancer. The benefits really are fo focus on two different aspects of treatment. One, experience. 
because it's clear that not only with surgery but also chemotherapy and radiation that experience in the management of pancreatic cancer matters to outcome but also the fact that Georgetown has a multidisciplinary team approach that when you see any one of the members of the team your case will be discussed among the multiple members of the team those team members include surgeons medical oncologists who give chemotherapy radiation therapists gastroenterologists who help us make the diagnosis and help us take care of patients after operations and the radiologists who provide us the images to determine whether or not somebody will benefit from an operation once a week we have a multidisciplinary meeting in which pancreatic cancer and other gastro gastrointestinal cancers are discussed I love what I do, but that's because I get so emotionally invested with my patients. It's a, what I get out of medicine is the bonding with the patient and taking them through a challenging diagnosis. Pancreatic cancer easily fits that mold. And so sometimes we're going to be successful and sometimes we're not. But taking that team approach with the patient, rather than just telling them what they need done, but forming a bond with that patient and that family member to get them through therapy and, and uh, try to achieve those goals is what I get out of medicine.